morning, 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 morning. On this Lord's Day, August 14th, August 14th, you know what time it is? It's 7.55. It's time to rise and shine, give God the glory and praise. It is an awesome, nice and bright Sunday morning, in Jesus' name. So I just want to greet everyone who is going to be on. Again, we're going to wait a few minutes until people um, are able to join us. We are going to get into scripture today. Today's going to be a good one, another good one. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a really good morning. So this is Matt, as everybody knows. And I uh, just want to greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And I believe that's uh, Sister Vane. I can't really see it. I believe I saw you give a heart. Good morning, good morning to everyone who is going to be on. Everyone who's coming on. I see profile pictures. That's good. That's good. God bless. This is the day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yes, Sister Vane, good morning. Happy Sunday. It is a happy Sunday because this is the day he has made in Jesus' name. So we're going to get into scripture, uh, get into the word. We're going to pray a little bit, and it's going to be a good time this morning. We're not going to be long, but it's going to be a very good time in the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, good morning, good morning. Yes, it is. Yes, it is a very good morning to everyone who is on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Just have an announcement that um, today, if you don't have anything to do, anywhere to go, at 10 o'clock in Rawway, Second Baptist Church in Rawway, Pastor Mark is going to be speaking He's going to be giving a powerful word in Jesus' name uh, on living, not to give up, but to live, choosing to live in Jesus' name. Uh, so definitely go out and support Pastor Mark. It's going to be 10 o'clock, Second Baptist Church in Rawway, New Jersey. Sister Cassandra, good morning, good morning. Sister Steph, morning. <laughs> or as you like to say, morning. <laughs> Sister Jill, good morning, happy Sunday in Jesus' name. Yes, we missed you, we missed you, but we will see you back again soon. There's been quite a few people um, away on vacation, um, but uh, that's all right. This is the season to rest, season to rest, to get away and to do something new. That's what Pastor Mark was actually talking about yesterday, too. Sometimes we, you know, don't take care of ourselves and don't really enjoy life too much. Just to do something, treat yourself, do something small, do something big, whatever you can afford, but just to, to get away, to rest, to do something different, something you enjoy, and that's important, in Jesus' name. <laughs> this is mom. <laughs> oh, that's Pastor Bev. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God for another day. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yes, Sister Doris, good morning, happy Sunday. Yes, it is a good morning, and yes, it is a happy Sunday, in Jesus' name. So, yes, we're going to give it a few more minutes. We're going to pray, get into the Word. So, I hope everyone is doing good this morning, and if you are not, I hope you are doing better after this Word. What we're going to talk about is the Word. The Word is worth fighting for, and uh, why is it worth fighting for? Because it's, it's powerful, it's alive, it's active, and it's for you. That is why. But we're going to get into that. Uh, let Scripture do the talking this morning. And uh, if I had to have a theme verse, which I don't really have, probably Ephesians 6 and 2 Corinthians 10. I'll probably start off with 2 Corinthians 10. Um, but yeah, it's going to be some really good stuff. And every week I like to go on, I like to give points uh, to not just encourage you, but to also encourage other people. Uh, even for those who are, aren't believers. So if a non-believer was to flip through, you know, some channels on social media or whatever and came to this, came to this, uh, to have reasons, why should I be a Christian? You should be a Christian because of the Word. The Word is alive, it's active, it's powerful, and it's for you. It can transform your life. And it's transformed my life in many different ways. Uh, one of the ways is by giving me a new heart. Not just a new spirit, Renewing my spirit, but also renewing my heart and my everyday life. Um, and also how I think, a new mind uh, that transforms my mind. Uh, the Holy Spirit is in this word. So yeah, there's there's many reasons. I <laughs> go on and on and on and on and on. Um, and elaborate, which I would love to, but don't have time. So yes, just want to say good morning to everyone. And yeah, so if you don't have your Bibles out, you can get them out if you would like. Or you can just listen. Um, you can get your coffee, get your... Um, 
breakfast ready, whatever you have, um, or if you're getting ready for the day, if you're going to take a shower, if you're getting dressed, whatever it is, I pray that you would have listening ears on this morning, as this is going to be a very good message, um, because God's Word is going to be preached. God's Word is going to be preached and taught in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. So we'll give it about another few minutes. And yes, just another reminder, Pastor Mark is going to be speaking this morning at Second Baptist Church in Rawway. So you don't want to miss that. Uh, if you can't make it, you can watch it on Facebook Live. It is going to be um, aired on Facebook Live. And you can watch it there for whatever reason if you can't make it out physically. Um, you can be there on Facebook Live, uh, not just spiritually, but support on Facebook Live in Jesus' mighty name. So that's good. So yeah, to everyone who is on, good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, I hope you are doing well. And if you are not, you know, be honest with yourself. And it's good to uh, be well in the Word. So hopefully you'll feel better after this. And even if you don't feel better, I pray that your that your faith is strengthened. In Jesus name and that you're able to go on and to press on because life isn't a, just about feeling good but it's about strengthening your faith and to grow stronger in Christ not just for yourself but for others around you yes in Jesus name Pastor Faye good morning yes it is uh, Sister Dora good morning yes it is it is a good morning it is a very good morning I'm feeling pretty good feeling pretty good this morning um, have some good plans out for today and the rest of the week. God is good. God is definitely good. And I can't wait to see what he has for us this morning and for the rest of the week. Because God does amazing things every single day. And uh, as Matthew 5 says, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. And if you want to see amazing things, uh, it starts with purity. Purity at heart so that you can see God in every day of your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, yeah, so we're going to be in a few different books. We'll start off at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, um, 3 through 5. And then we'll get into some other scriptures. And we'll be in Ephesians probably a couple times. And yeah, it's going to be really good. Uh, today's message, the word is worth fighting for. The word is worth fighting for. In Jesus' mighty name. Sister Naira Carter, good morning. Pastor Matt, Hope family, yes, good morning. Happy Sunday to all. It's a good morning and it's a happy Sunday in Jesus' name. So that's good. We'll just wait about another minute or two and then we'll get into prayer and then we'll get into the word. And yeah, today I really want us to uh, realize and to be encouraged and reminded of how powerful the word actually is. I was um, looking through YouTube and I saw a video about someone who had a, a vision about um, God's word. When he was reading it, he saw like a, a heart, like a beating heart in the middle of his Bible and how God was telling him that the word is literally, it's alive. And when we read it, it's like we're reading his heart. And I thought that was a pretty, pretty good short video. I see a whole bunch of videos and, you know, that one really caught my attention. And it's a good reminder that God's word, it is alive. It's not something that's just, you know dead like other you know fictional books uh but this is a true uh historical record of people who actually lived people who actually gave their lives of things that happen of things that will happen and things that can't happen and it's all about jesus from genesis to revelation is all about jesus and how god honors jesus and sets him, sets him up for honor that's what it's all about and uh, Jesus is the word made flesh. And when we honor him, it's like we're honoring the father. When we love him, it's like we're loving the father, as Jesus tells us. So that is why we honor and praise Jesus. Uh, not just on this morning, but every morning, every day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Steph, amen. You're feeling it. That's good. That's good. So in Jesus' name, um, yeah, let's get started in prayer. And if you have your Bibles out, you can get your Bibles out. If you just want to listen, you can listen as well. Um, and I pray that your spiritual ears are open, are open and ready to receive, because this is going to be some really, 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 really good stuff this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. So, dear Heavenly Father, we give you the glory and the praise for all that you are to us and for us. We pray that we can become better um, 
uh, our, our best selves so that we can become more like your son, so that we can bring glory to your son, so that he can bring glory to you, Father God, because it's all about that. It's all about bringing you glory through Jesus Christ. We pray that the word will transform our hearts and transform our minds as we uh, keep our minds on you. And as we continue to pray to you, as we talked about last week, you will give us perfect peace that guards our hearts and guards our minds. I pray that you will guard our hearts and minds so that no temptation, that no evil, so that no darkness, no demonic activity, uh, that it would be canceled and that it would not prosper, it would not succeed. You said that the, it will form, but it will not prosper in Jesus' mighty name. So we plead the blood of Jesus even right now over our minds. We plead the blood of Jesus over our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name, we plead the blood of Jesus even over our wills, what we will do and what we will not do. In Jesus' mighty name. So we plead the blood of Jesus on ourselves this morning. We thank you for your word. We pray that you would make it rich into our minds, rich into our hearts, and that you give us a greater desire and appetite to read your word and to pray and to pray the word. Because when we pray your word, we have a 100% answered prayer. Not in the way that we think it should be answered all the time, but we know that it will be answered all the time. In Jesus' mighty name, so we love you, we give you the glory and the praise. Amen and amen. So that's good, that's good. So in Jesus' mighty name, oh, Minister Maria, good morning, Pastor Matt. Yes, it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning. The word is worth fighting for. Yes, it is. So yeah, let's get into it. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Oh, so how was this message birthed? Um, Really, pretty much throughout the week, I was just uh, looking through some scriptures. I don't know how I got to this, but I was having a devotion time, and I, it was just really hard for me to think, like mentally. I was just having a mental battle. Um, and uh, usually when I read, I sometimes fall asleep, and I'm just like, oh, I'm trying to stay up and whatnot. And I was just really in my mind, I was just like, oh, my goodness. So um, I really wanted to, to, to fight. I really wanted to fight. Sometimes life is a struggle. Uh, sometimes with your thoughts, it could be a struggle or with your feelings, it could be a struggle. And uh, this in this life, life itself is worth fighting for. But even more so, the word is worth fighting for. Because in Psalms, it even says his his goodness is better than life. God's goodness is better than life. Um, and I'm like, you know what? The word is really powerful. I want to see how powerful it is. And I just started looking up some different verses on the word. And this one came to mind. And I was able to to, to encourage and strengthen a few of my friends uh, in the meantime. And yeah, and I started thinking about this. I'm like, you know, this would be really good to, to talk about. And uh, how powerful the word actually is and what it can do. In Jesus' mighty name. Sister Jennifer, amen, amen. So 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, let's just read verses 3, 4, and 5. And this one is going to be in the King James. And it reads, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk, we do not war after the flesh. So this walk isn't the same walk as when it talks about uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. That's more of a spiritual walk. This is more of a literal walk in the sense of uh, living every single day life in the natural so in the natural, we live in this flesh, obviously, um, but also we don't war or go to war in this flesh. When we talk about spiritual warfare, we talk about our spiritual life, our natural life. We walk in these bodies. We walk in the flesh In our spiritual life. We don't war in the flesh, but we war in the spirit. And how do, how do we know that? Because in verse four, it says for our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not natural, they are not physical, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So what are some of our weapons? One of them is the word of God. That's the sword and the spirit. Um, it's like a sword. We'll get into that uh, in a second, actually. Uh, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So if you struggle mentally or emotionally or willfully, physically, uh, spiritually, any area of your life, the word of God is for you. The word of God is powerful enough to literally cast down imaginations to be able to, um, uh, to take every high thing that exalteth itself um, uh, against the knowledge of God and being able to come against that to bring into captivity every thought 
So we know that the mind deals with thoughts, what you think and how you think. To keep those thoughts into obedience to Christ, that is what the word would do. How would it do that? Through Romans 12, as you renew your mind. How do you renew your mind? With the word of God. Once you have the word of God, you have the mind of Christ. And it, it doesn't mean you won't struggle anymore, but it means that you will struggle a lot less and that you'll get a lot more work done for the kingdom of God, and just in your natural life as well. So that is what the word can do. It can literally change your thoughts. So the word is worth fighting for. So if you're struggling mentally um, or emotionally, whatever area of life, you can fight back. You can fight back. And how do you fight back? Not with uh, carnal weapons, but with spiritual weapons, the word of God. The word of God is worth fighting for, and the word of God will fight for you. In Jesus' name. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3, 4, and 5. Now, um, <laughs> uh, as a lot of you, I'm pretty sure, already knew, we we're going to read Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I like this one. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And this is really good, talking about the Word of God. So, the Word of God, how powerful is it? We just talked about it can literally change your mind. It can change your thoughts. And Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it reads, this is also in the King James, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. So uh, what does that mean? Pretty much it means uh, there, there's no place the Word of God cannot reach and penetrate. It, it goes everywhere. Uh, it can uh, enter into the physical, manifest itself in the physical, manifest itself in the spiritual, and even in the soulish realm, your mind, your will, and emotions. Uh, and then your, it can affect your spirit, uh, your actual spirit, the deepest part of your identity. And it can also affect your body as well. The Word of God, it's, it's quick, meaning that it's alive, it's powerful, Meaning that it's not just alive or in existence, but it, it has the ability to do a lot. It's very powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. So meaning that when it touches something, it, it's, it's sharp. It, it causes an effect. It, it can cut through anything. It's, it's stronger than, than pretty, pretty much anything. Um, and it leaves an effect. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It can uh, it can separate your your soul and your spirit literally uh, when when you're cut with the word of God because it it allows you to to know who you are to identify yourself this is your spirit this is your soul and then this is your body and it's able to distribute what it needs to each of your identities uh, it's all you but it God is a God of order so this is our makeup. Our deepest identity is the spirit, and the word of God affects our spirit. Uh, a very deep part of ourselves is our soul, and it affects our soul. Just like when something happens that's really bad to you, um, uh, let's say if you have some really bad news or whatever, it, it cuts you. That word cuts you to the heart. This word cuts to the heart, but not just to the heart. It also cuts your spirit as well, meaning it affects your spirit. and also can cut your body, meaning that it can affect your, your body. That's how powerful this word is. Uh, other holy books, they can't do the same. They can they can affect your, your soul, your mind, will, and emotions, but they can't affect your spirit because it's not alive, like how the word of God is alive. The word of God is the only book that you can read and it can read you. It can cut you. It can affect you. It can uh, literally change your life, not just in this life, but for all of eternity and even for your spirit which is the eternal part of you. Uh, that's that's how powerful the Word of God is. Um, and yeah, that was Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verse 12. So I want to read, let's go into uh, Luke, Luke 22, 31 through 34. This is also in the King James. And the Lord said, oh, this, this is also going to be partnered with. I like this one. Okay, so Luke 22, that's also going to be partnered with 1 Peter as well. But Luke 22, verses 31 through 34, this is how it reads. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, 
What did Jesus pray for? He didn't pray for his finances. He didn't pray for his emotions and how he felt. He didn't pray that he would uh, become stronger mentally. Although all those things are, are possibly good. But what did he pray for? He prayed that thy faith fail not. That is Jesus' number one concern with all of us. That our faith fail not. But instead that it be strengthened. How? In him. How do we strengthen our faith in him? Through the word, which is what we're talking about on today. In Jesus' mighty name. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And this is what we're all about. We're all about not being our best selves just for us, but being our best selves for God. And what does that look like? That looks like being our best selves mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, so that we can help other people. So that we can help other people so that we can bless other people we're blessed to be a blessing so it's not all about you know me and my family and things like that which is good and great but what are you doing to be able to help other people help other people in your church that's good but that should be practice you should take out your word and your demonstration and everything that you have your gift talents and abilities and use it for people people at the workplace people randomly you know just uh, just a friendly smile that could go a long way someone needs a hug if someone you haven't called in a while you know call them or text them uh say hey think about you hope all is well hey praying for you um if you need something let me know you know random acts of kindness as the holy spirit lays it upon your heart so that we can do these things to be able to strengthen other people and jesus said just jesus said right here simon simon uh behold satan desired to have you uh, that he may sh sift you as wheat, but I pray that thy faith fail not, and when you're converted, to strengthen thy brethren, to strengthen your brothers. And uh, we should strengthen our brothers. Whenever God blesses us, we should be looking to bless other people, because God is in the business of helping others, because he, love, he loves the world. He doesn't just love the church. He doesn't just love Christians. He doesn't just love people who um who read the word and devote themselves to him but he loves the world at large and he wants to love the world at large as as it, like love in a in a verb verbal sense uh the, the action word and that's how we should be we should be agents of love meaning uh not just like the emotional love but the the action of love to be able to do other things for other people uh in wisdom in wisdom so um when I read that uh, scripture, I thought of the next scripture. So that was Luke twenty two thirty one to thirty four. We know that Satan desires to have us and to to uh, sift us as wheat, meaning to to use us uh, as for for his purposes. But uh, Jesus, he prays even right now. He's interceding on the right hand of the Father. Uh, what is he interceding for? That our faith fail not, and that when we're converted meaning that when we're strengthened and changed, that we can use our strength to pick others up who were once in the same position that we were in. So if you're feeling bad, don't worry about it. If you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling down, if you're feeling like, I just need to give up or whatever, don't. First of all, and that's what Pastor Mark is going to talk about this morning, don't. It's worth it because the same situation that you're in right now if you don't give up, you're soon to be helping other people in a similar position or possibly even worse position. So he's going to use these struggles and these temptations and these trials to be able to uh, strengthen you and to allow you to, to be energized and worked up and possibly even angry with a righteous anger so that you can get work done in your life so that God can use you. If you haven't been through anything, he can barely use you. But if you've been through some things, he's going to be able to use that towards his benefit to be able to glorify him. Because when he's glorified, that's when everything is in order, when everything is in place, when God is uh, righteously glorified. And for us to be able to glorify him according to how he wants us to glorify him, we have to go through some things so that we can understand some things. Because um, because experience is directly tied with understanding. And if you don't understand anything, that means you haven't experienced anything. And if you haven't experienced or gone through anything, you're not going to have much drive or passion towards anything. You're just going to be living life and at best dragging. So if you're going through a rough and tough time, that is okay. 
It's not okay for you to stay there, but it's okay for you to be there because God wants to strengthen you in that. He doesn't always necessarily want to take you out, but he wants to strengthen you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to strengthen your family. He wants to strengthen, most importantly, your faith. That is his number one concern. Jesus' number one concern is not your money. It is not your, um, um, not your, your how you feel, although those things are important. It's not your mentality and what you think. Uh, it's about your faith. That's his number one concern. Where is your faith? Do you have a lot of faith? Do you have a little bit of faith? Uh, whether if you have a lot of faith or the gift of faith or whatever, are you using that faith? Are you placing that faith in me? Jesus is saying this morning. Are you placing your faith, your trust, your confidence, wholly depend, 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 dependent on me? Are you fully dependent on me? If you're not, that's all right. Today, this morning is a great morning to to put it on Jesus. It's a great uh, to a great morning to depend on Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. I like the hearts, I like the likes, I like the amens in Jesus' mighty name. <clears throat> so that is good, that is good, that is good. So uh, in correlation to that scripture, there's also 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. As it says, be sober, be vi vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a, uh, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. And devour and, and to sift as wheat. That is what the enemy wants to do. He wants to control all of us. Uh, he has a threefold plan. That's to kill, steal, and destroy. That is what he passionately wants to do. Why? Because of his hatred for God. He knows God. He knows. Uh, well, he doesn't know how much, but he knows that God loves us so much, and he knows that when he hurts us, he's literally hurting the, the heart of God, and uh, that's what he wants to do. He wants to hurt us. Uh, he wants to kill us, to steal from us, and to destroy us. And we don't realize it a lot of the time, but a lot of the things we go through is because of the enemy, because of his plans. But we're talking about the word is worth fighting for, and the word will fight for you. And every plan of the enemy will not prosper. It, it may be formed, it may or may not, but it will not prosper as long as we stay in the word and allow the word to fight for us, and we fight for the word. How do we fight for the word? I'll say real quick. Um, your time, time management. That's that's a really big fight. Uh, when you come home from work, oh, I'm tired. Um, when you wake up in the morning and you know you don't really want to pray or you're running late or whatever, oh, I'm tired. Or or I have things to do. Um, or if you have plans and schedules and you can't really fit that into uh, fit devotion time into your uh, into your regular routine or whatever, uh, you fight for it. You know, if there was something that you really enjoyed, uh, if there's a person that you liked, you would make time for that person. If there was a show you enjoyed, you would make time for that show. Uh, if there's a book that you like to read, uh, you'll try to find time to, to read that book. Uh, if there's a game that you like playing, you'll try to find time to play that game. Uh, if uh, if there's a friend you haven't seen in a while, you'll try to fit that friend into your schedule somehow. Uh, and you, you'll, it's almost like a fight, like you'll fight for it. It's like, all right, it's, a fight is like competing against. You'll compete against certain time and you'll say, all right, this is not worth it. Maybe I'll block this time or this is worth it. I can't put it there. Um, but but is the God, uh, the word of God worth it to you? Where is the word of God in your schedule? Where is the word of God in your life? And that's not a word of condemnation because there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. But that is a, a, a wake-up call of... Um, the the correlation is if you have a lot of word in you you'll have a lot of faith if you don't have a lot of word in you you won't have a lot of faith and a lot of people say oh god doesn't speak to me god doesn't say this god doesn't say that uh, he i had a, a vision of this one time it was really really cool but god is always talking he's all like even right now he's talking how is he talking through me he's talking through through his word he's talking through his holy spirit he's always talking and we are to always be listening, always be listening to the word of God and what he is saying. Even in his silence, he's trying to communicate things to us, which we may not even realize. But it's so important to always be listening and attentive to what God is saying <laughs> in Jesus name. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So God is always, always speaking. And the en enemy, uh, through his hatred, as I was saying before, his hatred blinds him to a lot of things. He's, he's, he's like, uh, he's... Uh, I hope I have time. There's just so much to speak about. So real quick, uh, I had this one dream where um, I woke up in the middle of the night. It was really dark. 
and I went to my front door and I noticed it was unlocked. So I'm like, hmm. So I locked, well, before I locked it, I made, I opened it and I was like, wow, this, this door is open. So I closed it and locked it. When I closed it and locked it, it made a loud noise. And when I looked outside the window of the door, I noticed a black figure. He came up, you know, right to the door. And I was like, wow. And I knew that represented the enemy. And right before I closed the door, I noticed the enemy was looking for unlocked doors. Uh, so much so that he was on a bike and he was, he kept falling because of how fast he was going. So he would fall and get back up and like, oh, I don't have much time. And then like fall and then keep riding his bike. And I was like, okay. You know, I, I opened the door a little bit, closed it and locked it. And as soon as I did that, it made a noise. And I looked outside and I saw he was standing right there, like as if he was waiting for me to unlock it so that he can come into the door. What God uh, interpreted that was that the that front door was a door to my heart. If I unlocked it and opened it, the enemy would be able to come to my heart and uh, to be able to do whatever he wanted to do, to kill, steal, and destroy. But as soon as I locked it, uh, you know, we, we lock uh, God's word in our hearts and He he's the one who's able to guard it with his peace, as it says in Philippians chapter four, he guards our hearts and he guards our minds. How does he do that? With his word, through his spirit. And we should allow the, the word of God to guard as a shield, as a door, so that the enemy cannot get in. And once we do that, the enemy is not able to, to allow his plans to prosper. His plans will not prosper when we are guarded through the word of God. And the enemy, he's, he's, um, he, he's going around. He's really quick. You know, he, he doesn't have much time and he knows it. And he wants to be able to kill, just steal and destroy as many people as possible. As many people as possible. And um, yeah, but we have to realize that God is always speaking every single time, every single day. God is speaking. God, what are you saying? God, what do you what do you want to show me? What is the bigger picture? What do you want me to see? And it's good to think those things uh, intentionally, soberly, and uh, consciously, and even unconscious, just to always be looking and get in the habit of, all right, what is God saying here? What is God saying there? So be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as, as a roaring, roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In Jesus' name. So I'm just going to read um, a couple more, and then we should be pretty much good. In Jesus' mighty name, blessings, amen, amen, amen. Hearts and likes, hearts and likes, I love it, I love it. In Jesus' name, hearts and likes, that's good. Good morning, good morning, Sister Suzanne. Good morning, hearts and likes, amen. That's how we get to praise God on this uh, social media, in Jesus' name. Virtual praise, in Jesus' name. God will take it, God will take it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. King James Version, as it says, uh, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So he's saying that the temptations that you're going through, it's common. It's not like your your temptation is is the greatest temptation that anyone has ever been through and is very unique. No, it's 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 common. Maybe not to your neighbors or people near you, maybe or maybe not, but it's common. It's, it's not to the point of, "Oh God, why do you make me suffer like this? God, you know, I I can't deal with this. I can't do this." No, everything that he gives you, you're able to handle. Now, sure, he may be able to give you things that are very tough, but the reason is because he wants you to not handle it on your own, but to be able to handle it with him. And in some things, he does want you to handle on your own because that's how you're able to strengthen and to grow and to mature. It's such as a baby is not always going to hold the hand of their parents, but the a baby has to learn how to, of course, crawl first and then walk and to balance and to put their hands up and for balance and to wobble and to fall and to get up. But after a while, the baby's not going to be wobbling anymore, but walking and after walking, even running. And you're going to uh, maintain a good balance. We do the same thing in the spiritual. We may be, you know, uh, uh, maybe crawling, maybe walking, maybe stumbling and whatnot. And then soon we're going to be walking. And then soon we're going to be running in the word, in the spirit. And, you know, we still stumble, we still fall, you know, there's some things that we may not see or whatever, but that doesn't mean that we can't walk, that doesn't mean we can't run, that doesn't mean uh, we're not mature. Even the maturest of uh, Christians, you know, they stumble, they fall and whatnot because we're human. But 
That's where grace is for. God's grace is sufficient in our weakness. So in your weakness, that's when God's strength is able to be shown. It's not like God is more, you know, it's, not, it's not like God is stronger because he's God, but his strength is shown best in our weakness, such as, um, you know, in a, in a dark place, if you have a flashlight, you know, it, it illuminates on a certain spot, like really, really bright. And the darker something is, the brighter that light becomes. So the weaker we are and realize that who we are, the stronger God's strength is to us and is visible to us in Jesus' name. So, amen, amen, amen. That was First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. And then uh, James is very similar, chapter 1, 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So, someone comes up to you and says, hey, you know, um, um, I have this opportunity and that's not a good opportunity, whether if it's for business or whether for whatever it may be. Um, or if you're tempted to do something that you know is wrong, you just know it's wrong. You don't have to uh, read the Bible to know it's wrong. You don't have to be told. You don't have to have a vision or a dream. You just know it's wrong, whatever. Um, and it's it's like appealing to you. It's very tempting. That's not from God. Um, that's not from God. That's from the enemy or that's from the flesh or that's from, you know, your surroundings, whatever it may be. God does not tempt us like that. Now, God does test us in certain ways, but he never tempts us. Why? Because he, he cannot be tempted. It's not in his nature. He can't be tempted. You can't even tempt God. Satan tried that and failed miserably. Uh, so out of his nature, he doesn't do that. Uh, he, he, he can't be tempted, so he doesn't tempt. But he does test. He does test. And uh, sometimes you may need discernment to distinguish, all right, God, is, is this a test or, or, or a trial from you or is this from the enemy? And that's from discernment. And we get discernment from reading the word. And once we read the word, we have the mind of Christ. And that's how we're able to have that discernment. But to know that God never tempts. He will never tempt you to do evil. But instead, what will he do? Deliver us from the evil one. He will deliver us from the evil one. And that's a very important prayer to pray in Jesus' name. Um, even, oh, I'll give this short example real quick. Even Jesus, after he was baptized, what happened? The Spirit led him in the wilderness. Why? To be tempted. It wasn't that God tempted him, but he was, um, he, uh, Jesus, well, I personally believe he was so perfect that uh, even God, whenever God gave him a test to do this, to do that, uh, he would always pass it, like with flying colors, like he would be so good. And he's like, all right, what I'm going to allow you to do is now be tempted by the enemy. God never tempted Jesus, but the enemy did. And God just led him towards that path to be able to fast and to pray for those 40 days, which is absolutely amazing because he had to do that. And when he was weak, that's when he was tempted by the enemy. So if you are being tempted, don't worry about it. Um, God knows God is there and we have the word of God to be able to succeed, to be able to succeed. I, I wouldn't place so much emphasis on the moment, um, but to always ask God, God, what is the bigger picture? What do you want me to see? Um, because we, we all, you know, struggle. We all fail in some sort of areas of life, but however, what's most important is that we keep, um, praying that we keep fighting for the word of God to be number one in our hearts and number one in our minds. As once that happens, all the rest will play out. All the rest will play out. As we just read those scriptures, we know that the word of God, it is powerful. It is alive. Uh, when we fight for it, it fights for us. And it fights for us every single day. Um, and we just need to, uh, one of the greatest fights is time management. To be able to read the word of God and to read it consistently. Uh, one thing that I'm trying to do is to uh, pretty much read the, the whole Bible. I read most of it. But to re read pretty much the whole Bible, and but I, I really want to do it in the sense of like taking notes and to be you know as sober minded as possible, not just to read it, just to you know some people read it just to to be reading it and say oh you know I read it. I don't I never really was interested in doing that. I always wanted to get as much word as possible that I can can keep and to be able to demonstrate and teach. And it's it's been really good. It's been really good. So the Word of God is alive, it's powerful, and it renews our minds. So last scripture that I would like to read in Jesus' mighty name is from Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Have to fight good fight of faith. That's right. Fight the good fight of faith. 
and that's the only fight that we are called to to fight the good fight of faith because these other fights are are the, they're the lords they're gods uh god's fight god's battle actually i do have a scripture on that in jesus name in Jesus' name. Uh, why not? Let me read that one real quick. Uh, okay, yeah, here it is. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. Um, I'll just read the, the half of it. It says, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So in this life, uh, many of the battles aren't ours necessarily, but they are God's battle. Why? Because he wants to credit when he wins. So such as a great multitude, as we just read, when your battles and temptations, trials, struggles, whatever it is, may seem great in number or great in difficulty, um, that, that's good. Why? Because once you do overcome that struggle, uh, God gets the credit. God gets the glory from that. Then you're able to take that testimony and to be able to um, help other people who were in a similar or same or even worse situation in Jesus' name. So that makes you even more useful in the kingdom of God. And we all want to be useful for God to be able to use our gifts, talents, abilities, our experiences uh, with all manner of wisdom, knowledge, understanding because of our experiences. And if we don't go through anything... Uh, we can't go to anything. We we just can't. Not mentally, not barely, physically. Uh, we have to go through things uh, and allow things to not go through us at the same time. But to be able to, like, water off a duck's back. Just go through life and say, all right, God, show me a bigger picture. Strengthen me in your will. So that you can go to work every single day with a good attitude. You know, even on, on bad days, you know, to not be stressed out. So that you can talk to people that you disagree with and not you know, become emotional or frustrated or tested so that you can have joy again and, or and, uh, or at least peace in your marriage and in your family, in your relationships, uh, things like that. Uh, so, you know, so that you can live life, life peacefully, so that you can be healthy uh, inside and out in Jesus' mighty name. So uh, let me read Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And yeah, talking about the whole armor of God, the whole armor of God, in Jesus' mighty name. Ah, Auntie Linda, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, that's right. Uh, Minister Steph, I know exactly what you mean. Reading the Word of God is not a race. Uh, it is to be savored. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's definitely right. It is to be savored. Uh, this is um, our walk. We walk by faith and not by sight. And uh, we don't run by faith because... Um, he gives us our daily bread, you know, daily. And if you run into tomorrow, you're just gonna run into a lot of worries. It's like running into a wall. So we we walk. It's it's, a, it's about patience, 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 patience. In Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter six, verse ten. The whole armor of God. A final word. This is from the New Living. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. And we know that the devil, he desires us. He greatly desires us. Why? Because he wants to get to God. It's not about you. It's not about me. He wants to get to God. Uh, his hatred is for God and his hatred blinds himself. Um, and as love covers a multitude of sins, uh, hatred uh, covers your eyes from the truth. And his hatred covers, you know, uh, covers his eyes from a lot of things to the point he, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care about a lot of things. He's like, he just wants to get to God. And how does he do that? By hurting us. So that's why it's important to put on God's armor so that we're able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world against mighty powers in the dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. How do we do this? By faith. As we talked about, you know, quite frequently, how do we receive things from God? By faith. We receive it by faith. Sometimes there is work involved, and sometimes it's just faith. Sometimes it's just faith. Uh, as we read some scriptures into that, um, 
uh, uh, last week and a few weeks ago. We receive things from God by faith. So how do we put on the armor of God? By faith. Some people, and I've done this a couple of times, literally put on the armor of God in the sense of like, uh, you, you, you like do the motions. Like when you put on the helmet of salvation, you put on the helmet of salvation. I'm going to put on the helmet of salvation. I'm going to put on the uh, breastplate of righteousness. I'm going to put on the belt of truth. I'm going to, you know, and it's like as if you're getting dressed. And that's a very good practice to, to do. So let's get into this. Uh, then after a battle, you'll be able to stand firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth. So what do belts do? Belts hold things into place. So if you don't have any truth, you will not be stable. You will not be put into place. Whatever armor you may have is just going to fall right off. So that's why having God's truth, which is Jesus, puts everything into place. Jesus puts everything into place in your life. Without that in order, everything else will be out of order. So the belt of truth, having truth. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, the truth will set you free. Without the truth, you, you have no armor. That is such an important part. You need the belt of truth to put the belt on in Jesus' name. And the body armor of God's righteousness. That's important. How do we strengthen? You can strengthen the armor of God too, which is another step. How do we strengthen the, 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 the body armor or the breastplate of righteousness? By doing good works. When we do good works, it allows our, our, uh, our breastplate to be strengthened, to be stronger. Uh, because it's of righteousness. We're led in the, the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So we do things like good things or good works, whatever, for him. And we know that we are called to do good works. We do good works. They're in Jesus name. And when we do that, our, our armor is going to be strengthened. Our armor is going to be strengthened for shoes. Put on the peace that comes from God, uh, that comes from the good news uh, of God so that you will be fully prepared and as it says here let's see or it also says for shoes put on the readiness to preach the good news of peace with God so we should always be ready to preach the word of God and to demonstrate it in Jesus mighty name and also this is uh, I believe this is from what God is saying to uh, allow and to ask the Holy Spirit ask the Holy Spirit to say Holy Spirit Open doors for me to preach your word or open doors for me to demonstrate your word and watch him do that. He's going to he's going to do it uh, just throughout this week, even today. Holy Spirit, open the door for me to be able to preach your word, to teach your word, to demonstrate your word, to show people that you are real. Um, and once you do that, he's going to open up those doors and uh, you're going to have to walk through it because you ask for him to open up that door and then you just walk through it. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil or the evil one. Put on salvation. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which, which is what we're talking about. The word of God in the spirit. It looks like a sword and it acts like a sword. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert sober and persistent in all your prayers uh, for all believers everywhere so that is that's what it's all about being strong being stable so that we can pray for other believers everywhere so that we we are strong so that we can be strong for someone else we're encouraged so that we can encourage other people we're blessed so that we can bless other people we're um wise so that we can give other people wisdom uh, we are given peace so that we can give others peace um, and all these things, uh, we're, we're, God would never give you something so that you can hold on to it and keep it for yourself. That's unwise. That's not managing uh, wisely what God has given you. He gives to you so that you can give to others. Because when you give to others, God takes that personal as if you've given it to him. That's why Jesus said, oh, when I was in prison, you didn't visit me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. When I was hungry, you didn't feed me. And they said, you know, how, how, when were you naked? When were you in prison? When were you this and that? He said, to the least of these that you've done to the least of these, uh, you've done unto me, meaning I take it personal. So if we want to bless God, if we want to be kind to God, if we want to be, uh, you know, gentle, kind hearted, you know, we want to love God. We do that by loving people. 
especially to the least of these, to people who cannot pay you back, to people who cannot express their gratitude enough, to people who would owe you, you know, a debt that they just cannot pay. And you know that they just cannot pay. When you treat those people with certain attributes and certain love and whatnot, it's as if you're doing that to God. So if you want to, so if your if your heart's desire is God, I just I just want to bless you. You know, I just want to honor you. I just want to love you. I just want to do these things for you. Great. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people who need help. Help them. And when you help them, when you love them, when you honor them, it's as if you're honoring God. It's as if you're helping God. It's as if you're loving God. Why? Because God loves people and God uses people to bless people. That's what it's all about. So put on the armor of God and to keep it on. How do we do that? By faith. So we can do that even right now by faith in Jesus' mighty name. As we stand our ground, we put on the belt of truth that keeps everything into place. We put on the body armor of God's righteousness. And again, as we continue to do good works, it strengthens our armor. Uh, for shoes, we put on the peace that comes from the good news and being able to preach the good news in Jesus' name. And we put up the shield of faith. That stops the fiery arrows of the enemy, of the evil one, the devil. We put on salvation as a helmet because he's going to he's gonna throw those fiery darts. And once they're thrown, if, if it hits your head, you're, you're done for. You know, a headshot is, that's, 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 uh, that's, uh, that, that's the worst. There's no worse place in your body to get hit other than the head. So that's why we need salvation. That, that's like, that's <laughs> like, without salvation, you might as well not have any armor whatsoever so that's so important put on the helmet of salvation and we all have that because we are saved in jesus mighty name so um uh we put up the shield of faith and with the shield of faith we have the sword of the spirit that is the word of god we have the word of god in our hearts and it's not just to be in our hearts but out of the abundance abundance of the hearts the mouth speak so when you speak, is as if a sword is coming out of your mouth, as it says in Revelation, that uh, Jesus, like when he speaks, it's like swords coming out of his mouth. It's sharp. That means it cuts. That means it's effective. The word of God is effective in our lives. Being able to cut our spirit, being able to cut our souls, being able to cut even these bodies, how we feel and how it operates. Once we do that, uh, we have the full armor of God in Jesus' name. So we have, right now, we have the full armor of God. How do we have that? By faith. We put on the armor of God by faith. We have the armor of God by faith in Jesus' mighty name. So if you receive it, say that you receive it. Say that you receive it. You receive the armor of God. Let me see it in the comment section. You receive the armor of God in Jesus' mighty name. Say that you receive it. I just want to see some hearts, some likes, some comments. Let me know that you receive it so that this word was well received in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, let me know that you have received the armor of God by faith. In Jesus' mighty name. And also some hearts and some likes. In Jesus' mighty name. There you go. There you go. You receive the armor of God. Receive the armor of God by faith. You receive it. In Jesus' mighty name. By faith. Because it's by faith. The number one thing that Jesus is concerned about is our faith not even our health not our finances not how are we feeling he cares about those things greatly but what he cares about most is our faith so we use our faith to be able to operate in the spirit in jesus mighty name we walk by faith not by sight i receive the armor of god in jesus mighty name i receive the armor of god by faith in jesus mighty name yes by faith by faith so now we are all strengthened we are all encouraged we all have the armor of god we have the helmet of salvation we have the the uh, uh, breastplate of righteousness we also have the belt of truth and we have the uh, shield of faith the shield of faith, which is so, so important. We have the word of God, which is the sword. We have uh, shoes as well that we're able to run to spread the gospel message, not just to preach it, but also to demonstrate it. We run with the word of God, receive the armor of God by faith in Jesus' mighty name. Receive it, receive it, receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Hearts, hearts, hearts. Wow, that's, <laughs> uh, that's a lot of hearts by faith in Jesus' name. I love it. I receive the armor of God in Jesus name that's what it's all about strengthening our faith strengthening our faith so that is good I just want to give one reminder that uh, Pastor Mark uh, in about an hour and 10 minutes at 10 o'clock at Second Baptist Church in Rawway he's going to be preaching a message on to live in Jesus mighty name on living for God and um, yeah, this is really uh, coincides with the message on today and even with yesterday as well. We uh, recommend you coming to 
the hope on sun on summers we have an hour of power uh she talked about uh she talked about uh you know doing things to be able to, to break up the monotony of life and to bring life into your life and just to do things that you enjoy and he's going to be talking about today about living uh what life is worth living for and today we talked about the word is worth fighting for in jesus mighty name because some people are in, in a very difficult place very tough place even in church you may not even realize it the person sitting next to you may be struggling with battles that are very difficult but we know that the word of god is uh powerful very very powerful and the spirit is very very powerful and even manifested into this natural world in jesus my name i receive it in jesus name amen and amen so yes so let's go out and support pastor mark if you can't support him physically uh, to be there online, to be there online. I received the full armor of God. We put on the armor of God. How? By faith. That's right. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. In hands. Praise in hands. That's right. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Sister Sherry. Amen. That's right. Hearts and likes. Don't stop living, Minister Steph. So that's good. I'm glad everyone receives this well. I'm going to pray out and I'm going to see everyone out in Jesus' mighty name. So it is 8.50. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Know that the word of God is worth fighting for. F uh, fit him into your, your schedule, into your, your tight schedule. I know you're busy. I know you're doing things. You're whatever uh, other things compete for your, your attention and appetite. But the word of God should be first place in your life doesn't mean you, you're just sitting down reading the word all day you know that, that's not what we're called to do but we are called to have the word of god to feed it into our souls daily so that we can fight for the word of god and it, it fights for us in jesus mighty name have a wonderful day yes we will we will in jesus mighty name have a great day and week god bless god bless in jesus mighty name so let's pray out Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your word, which is powerful, which is alive, which cuts us into the spirit, into the soul, into even our bodies. We thank you that uh, your work is to fight for us, that you're, you're, we have your, your, your weapons. We have the shield of faith so that the, the enemy is not able to stand against us, but we're able to stand against him so that we're able to, to block uh, his, his strategies, the, the fiery darts. We're able to quench it, that we're able to, to fight the enemy with the word of God as Jesus fought the enemy with the word of God. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. So we say, it is written, it is written, it is written. It's already written. We don't have to write anything. We don't have to think of anything. We just go to the word of God. We have it in our hearts. So it is uh, manifest through our mouths so that we can speak the word of God so that we can make it manifest into our lives. And even right now, we put on the armor of God. We do that by faith. We choose to believe that we have the armor of God from head to toe, that the armor of God, it works for us, that we're able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy, that we're able to stand against all of his strategies, that the enemy will not have us and sift us as wheat, that he will not kill us, steal from us, or destroy us. He will not kill, steal, or destroy our family. The enemy has no hold over us, but we break all strongholds right now in the mighty name of Jesus through your strength, through your word. Your word renews our minds. Your word is so, it's eternally power, powerful. It, it that it's your power is immeasurable you there are no limits on your power there is no limits to your presence so we feel your presence we acknowledge your presence we we worship you we we honor your presence even right now in your word we honor your presence in your word so we thank you we lift you up jesus we thank you that your holy spirit loves to be in a presence where jesus is glorified so jesus we glorify you so that you can take that glory and bring it to the father and glorify him and that we become more like you that's john 15 says when we become more like you that is glorifying to you and you bring that very glory to the father and we thank you that we can worship you we can honor you we can respect you we can love you we can obey your commandments and that we are are in our spirits our spirits are holy our spirits are perfect because it's in perfect union with the holy spirit and your holy spirit helps to clean up our our, our sinful flesh every single day so that we can continue to live more like you in the spirit so we thank you for all these things. We thank you for today, the, the, the plans that we have today. We pray that uh, we would uh, make you first and that not only will we go from putting you into our schedule, but that we will mature and, and realize that you have put us into your schedule, that we would ask you, Holy Spirit, what do you want from us? What do you want us to do? Where do you want us to go? And we thank you for all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. 
So we give God the glory and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, great word. Keep teaching, preaching, building up the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why I'm born. That's why I'm here. Have a blessed day. Love you all. Hope everyone has an amazing day. And everyone is dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. God is good. God is good. The word is worth fighting for. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 May God continue to bless you and keep you. Uh, to, to continue to keep you and bless you. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, he is. He is keeping all of us. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. That's good. That is good. In Jesus' name. God is good. Blessed one to all. Amen, amen. Have an awesome rest of your day. Woohoo. That was a good hour of power. Good stuff, good stuff. In Jesus' mighty name. Love you all. Be blessed, be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Sister Cassandra, amen, amen. Good to see from you. In Jesus' name. God bless. Love you all.